practice any? Get out. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. So here's what we do. Just grab your nine iron first, if you would. Just okay. your nine. Get out a little bit. Red, how's it going? Good. Greg. Okay, so here, I thought tonight we'll hit, we'll, get, we'll hit more balls than last week, and I thought we'd start with nine iron first, and then we'll we'll hit some nines for a bit, then we'll go to a, a seven iron, and then we'll hit some five iron. Okay, but we'll go over some things we went over last week. We'll get your grips real good, your setups real good. Hey, Paul, we'll start with a nine, okay? Okay. Susan, grab yep. you your nine iron. Come on. Over. club, you're closer to the ball, you'll start hitting more on this, what we call on the screws, again because it's a shorter swing, but a lot of customers, they'll come here and drop their balls and the first club they grab, you know, they'll just grab that driver and start swinging on their shoes. And it will take them about 15 minutes before they finally hit a ball like where they're supposed to. You know where I laugh at our golf outings, you know, they because they park up there, and they get their clubs on the cart, and then we shuttle them to the range. And it's funny, you see the whole shuttle cart full of guys with their driver in their hand, like, oh, man. Because you're, you, you're gonna have more, more productive practice if you just get your rhythm and your swing and small swings, small shots, okay? All right, so let's go over your grips real quick from last week. Before we go to the mats, we'll get your setups good. Greg, you've ever had lessons ever? No, that. Okay, so from last week, remember what I was mentioning? You want to hold the club more in the fingers with the left hand. You want to let the back of the, uh, the, the cap of the club stick out the back of your left hand. All right, and this is real important. Try and get the fat of your left hand, the, the heel pad they call that, more on top of the handle. I see this grip too often where the club's too much stuck in their palm. Okay, so you want the club down the fingers, heel the pad at the top, and then as you look down, you guys, last week I mentioned you should top two knuckles of your left, back your left hand, and your thumb should fall to the left, which we call one o'clock. Nice, right? Okay? And remember what I said about your um, logo on the handle or the shaft? There should be some type of logo. Make sure that's straight away. All right? And then the club face, that means the club face is nice and square. Let me just see everyone's left hand real quick. Or the lock, some of you are a fan of the interlock. I'm partial to the overlap grip. Paul, oh, you like overlap, right? Mm -hmm. And look what I'm doing. It's overlap. Now you should spread the fingers of your right hand out a little. My left hand are real close together. My right hand is spread out. Okay? And you should not see your left thumb. So when you have a real good grip, you won't see your left thumb at all. And then the right thumb, you guys, will fall to uh, one o'clock. Which is just the opposite. And then when your grip's good, good grips, and seriously, one of my our lessons last night, Jimmy, I, I've been teaching for years, I mean three, four years. He comes, oh, you know, maybe a handful of times a year and keeping on track. And I'm serious. We mainly the whole hour worked on his hands last night, his grip. Because I can't tell you how his grip gets crummy and then everything gets so bad. 
you know. And um, again, if I add more information to Jim and his swing, it's not good, you know. His swing is a little, it's, it's, it's come a ton of a ways, but my point is, your hands and how you hold the club, you guys, and how you learn the grip, is going to help a ton. It's, it's going to help you with everything else as we swing. Once your hands aren't correct, and the club's off, and there's too much tension, it just, things from there start going, okay? So, okay. So your posture, you are getting your stance last week, I mentioned like shoulders, right? Your shoes should point slightly outward. So that's your stance. And then posture and ball position. Remember last week I mentioned you can't really go wrong playing the ball a little left of center. So if that's dead center of my feet, I might move just a little bit so the ball is a little bit to your left of center. Okay? And I'm not one to like, okay, the nine iron's there. Then the pitching wedge a little further back, the sand wedge, you know, the eight, seven iron, six iron, five iron. Just keep it simple. Keep everything a little left to center. Maybe if you get a five iron, we'll go make another ball left. And then the woods is one more ball left. Other than that, okay? And then this posture, like from last week, I was trying to get everyone where get your weight kind of the balls of your feet. Right? And bend a lot of your hips, push your butt out, try to get your back as straight as you can. And then your arms are just kind of hang pretty comfortable. And then this position is going to allow a lot of positive things to swing. Okay? I'll come around real quick and just and watch me too. Distance from the ball, you guys, if you start getting too far away, you're going to like angle your back. That isn't good. And this is too far away. This club's going to be all over the place. And then you don't want to be crowded. Then you're going to like, you're going to be on your heels. So you need to be just that right distance from the ball. That's kind of comfortable. Well, this isn't going to feel comfortable. But eventually it'll feel okay. Okay? Is it an issue with, it? with the toe of your club being up a little? Okay. Greg asked about the toe, this golf club toes up off the ground just a little bit. That's basically what you want. You never want it like dead flat or too far up. Usually, if the club is fit good, it's got to, that toe is just a little off the ground. That's a good question because I wouldn't want to take my hands and like make sure it's dead flush. <laughs> then this is tight, and that's not going to leave you good swings. Okay. Let me come around real quick. Okay. So we're going to get you swinging. Watch me on just a couple. And we'll get you guys all... Okay. So again, a few things from last week. We we're getting you comfortable. Good ball position. Uh, the back swing. Again, if your grip's good, you're not that gripping it. Over the wide. The weight of the club, the weight of this head. Your wrist work the right way as long as your grip's good. But again, as the club comes up and back, it's important that you stay in your feet and stay down. You don't want to move your, you don't want to this, or you move your posture. You know, we don't want to like break down the left knee and bring up off that heel. This should hardly move. You'd be surprised how this is plenty of motion. Save your motion, you guys, for down and through. Too many people go. And they don't use their motion that way. In golf, all your energy is going to go through. So if you save your energies going back, you're going to have a lot of energy to hit. See that one? Hurry, did you see that? Yes. <laughs> Was it good? Yeah. Nice. This is like all the practice I get through the week, so I, I don't know if you guys learned anything watching me. You <laughs> learned something. But again, it looked simple, didn't it? I was over no. the ball nice. The club came up. I didn't turn that much. I turned just a little bit. Got my weight to the right slightly, right? And then I stayed down until I hit the ball and went through. So less back. More through. That had a little curve. Not bad. Okay? Now watch one thing now. Here's a, So that's my nine iron. 
here's, and then we're going to we'll hit the seven. Now watch this. So my seven is a little longer than the nine. So I'm going to stand a little farther from the ball. It's only going to be different with the seven iron. If I got the same grip, same there. Ball position is the same. Posture is the same. But now because this club's a little longer, I'm just this further from the ball. But I'm going to continue that same little swing back and through. Okay? And because it's a seven, it'll send out there a little farther. Make sense? So I'm making the same swing with the seven as I did the nine. But it'll carry a little further than the nine. Most people try and hit. Then I have a five, okay, and everyone's trying to hit further. Oh, wow, I got a five. I better like swing harder. Like so hit farther. But that's the opposite. Again, I hit the ball somewhere around here. The way the club is built, it should go further. And then the clubs get longer, you guys, as they get longer, they get lighter. So without, what's going to happen? Your tempo will just speed up a little more than the seven. And when your tempo speeds up, then the ball just kind of... That was pretty good. Okay? I guarantee that ball I hit pretty close to somewhere around here. So how did I do that? I didn't move a lot. I stayed over the ball. I started when I was 12. That's a big difference. Yeah. Now the crummy Okay. Any questions? <coughs> oh, so so again, like last week, take your time. You know, I got extra balls too. If you last grip was going through the golf course, I got extra balls. But again, I'd rather you take your time, take some practice swings. If you make a practice swing that doesn't feel right, do another one. So really, wow, that felt good. That felt good. Keep that rhythm. Okay? Okay, so now here's what we're going to do though. Just hit nines first for maybe 10 minutes, and I'll tell you to switch to a seven for another 10 or so, and then maybe we'll hit some fives. But again, start with your nine to get some rhythm and feel, and get the ball in the air. Okay, everyone have your five? All right. Nine. Okay, so now we'll hit some five, or even a hybrid five. Some of you, what they're doing now, the irons are kind of going to about a five, and then all of a sudden it's hybrid five, or hybrid four, or hybrid three. They're easier to hit. Because as these clubs get longer, as the clubs start getting longer, it's going to be a little more difficult to hit. What's going to happen, you guys? Little flaws in your swing, they start coming out more. Because you're farther from the ball, the club's longer, so it's kind of the nature of the beast, okay? But, if you get it, stay within yourselves, keep your fundamentals good. If we can keep hitting the ball somewhere around here, it's going to go further. David asked earlier um, the distance in between your clubs, and seriously, a lot of golfers, gals, and guys. I get the question, Jeff, it just seems like all my clubs, they all go that same kind of distance, you know? But it's again, you know, the five iron should go further because you're not hitting the ball here. You're hitting it here, you're hitting it here. It's not going like it should. But as things get better, as your swing gets better, and you start hitting more solid, you might see some better distances. Now, the pros, you know, I might be 10 yards difference with every club. But you guys, even golfers have been playing a lot. Maybe five yards, maybe seven yards, maybe four yards. You guys might love your seven iron. And what happens is you might feel used in a lot. Maybe you just start the game. You're going to find a club in that bag that you really kind of like. You just use it a lot. You'll use it the whole nine holes. That's okay. But as you start getting better, You'll start want you'll start wow, I need you'll start wanting to use a different club because they'll start going different. But
but it's not the end of the world if you love your club, one club, and you use it like a lot. Because it's a hard game, right, Susan? Susan's been playing a lot of years, but I guarantee her first year playing, you probably didn't use many clubs out of your bag. I used my three iron. <laughs> <laughs> See, she loved her three. Well, I guarantee Susan with that three iron, as a new golfer, she just was positive in her life. Club. And even though it's a hard club to hit, she just had this positive about it, and she would swing nicely. Now, Paul's telling her, hey, hit that three wood. You're going to hit it better. Well, I guarantee she's got the three wood in her hand, and she's thinking how she hates this club, and she struggles with it. So it's, it's, not, it's not uncommon, but that's how it is. But again, you guys are real new, Barb and Maria. Don't worry about all those clubs you bought. I'm borrowing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to learn the game, but don't make it hard on yourself. So what I'm getting at is don't beat up yourself with this five iron right now. Because you're going to line yourself really wet for the ball, right? It's going to come. A couple nice comments was, wow, Jeff, when I don't death grip it, it really it does well, you know, and that's very true. When you, you know, but again, it's going to take time. Let things sink in. When you hit it right, just sit back, wow, that felt good. I hit it right on the screws. And my bad looks was good. You know, we want to kind of critique that. Because we're kind of hard on ourselves. Once we hit it bad, oh my gosh, what did I do? I did that again. You've got to stay positive. Because it is, it's, it's not easy from a standing still position to take this club up and through and hit it dead straight, solid, far. It's not easy. It looks easy, right, Maria? No. <laughs> <laughs> it looks easy, but seriously. That's so really my easy. point is, <laughs> yeah. don't beat yourselves up. Take it slow, patience. It's, not, it's a hard game. Right, Susan? Susan, how many years have you been playing? Too many. <laughs> too, many too many. About 15. See? And she's still out here trying to get lessons, trying to get better, getting that right, Tim. Get in that feel because it's just a hard thing. But it doesn't. It just, it just takes the patience. Now, some people don't have patience. <laughs> just, that's how we are, you know. And seriously, the game, girls are taking up the game, which are great. Women, more women are taking up the game than guys. This has been going on for five years. And, you, know, I, I, you probably all know the game's like flat. Man, we've been in the 90s. Tiger Woods coming on. He's winning everything, the economies, this and that. People are buying houses left and right. They're building golf courses. They built two courses a day. They were building courses left and right. And I don't mean uh, mid-iron course. I mean like Cantini's and the Glen Club and all these high-end courses were just booming. Well, now the business is like, it's just, it's, now we've built too many courses. People aren't playing as much. But my point is the gals, you all start to play, but what happens is you guys get out of the game. It's like you get in it, but then you're like, you know what, this is too hard. It's too hot out, or it's raining, and I don't like that, and it takes too long. But no, seriously, the ones that do stay, Susan, 15 years, it, it is really, but it takes time, it takes patience, but um, it is a really neat game. Okay? But seriously, I say that because I see it all the time. You okay? ready? So um, let's we'll finish with some fives. But again, when I come around and give you that thought, I don't want I don't want to keep burying thoughts on you. Simple thing. Wow, if you want to stay, once your head dives, everything else dives. You guys can just stay over the ball, hit the rhythm. That's the other thing. I watch a few of you hit like two, three good ones. Wow. You know, all of a sudden, the next one, you almost like miss the ball. That's part of golf. Just don't get frustrated with that. Take your time. Sound good? Okay. So, let's try some five. Now, the only only thing is back to the distance question. You kind of didn't answer my question. All right. Um, um, because I'm thinking, like, your five, you want to hit... 150, 175, you're seven, you want to hit like. Yeah, okay. Good like, like something like that. It's so different from every golfer. Because of your athleticisms, that's, you know, boys, girls, guys. 
Um, but you need to know what you hit 150. And it could be your 5 iron. It could be Greg's 6 iron. It, it could be um, Bob's hybrid. But once you know what you hit 150, then you, 140 will be one less or 145 and go off of that. Girls, gals, usually 100 yards. So when you connect, Nikki, maybe in a couple weeks once you get figuring this game out, you're going to connect to that sand, your 7 iron. You know, and then if you, you hit it shorter, you'll back off to your 8 iron. But it, it's, from person to person, it's all, it's all over the board. And it doesn't matter that you hit a 7-150 and Bob hits his hybrid. But as long as you know what you hit. But your swing's got to get a little more consistent, so you're hitting it more here. And the ball's going, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that, that's why you might hit a real good swing and all of a sudden that nine iron went too far. Whereas the best golfers, that nine iron goes the same distance all the time. Mm -hmm. But not for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Good? Okay. You answered it better? Better. <laughs> I can't kill you. I can't <laughs> answer it. Hunter. Park a little, way further down the parking lot, there's a gate. And then... I'll either be by that flag, see the American flag, there's a big putting green. There's a good chance I'm there. There might be a chance you just walk up the cart path to the back of the barn. Okay? But I'm probably going to be by that flag. But you'll see, you'll see. Now, if it's raining or kind of crummy weather, we'll stay here, so bring your whole bag. But as long as the weather's decent, we can, we'll be. So we're going to get away from full swing for a couple weeks. We're going to go to short game. So don't get away from what you're kind of doing. And things that are helping you. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Balls no balls for playing it. You won't need any golf balls. And again, keep it simple. Take your time. It keeps getting better. Okay, I enjoyed it. Good. We'll see, we'll see you. you in a week. Thank you.